time to get out and play. Amsoil delivers the ultimate protection for your vehicles and equipment. Fast free shipping right to your door. Spend $100 and shipping is on us. Order now at amsoil.com. So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust the valves. Greg's gonna to try to not scratch up his pretty little chrome covers. Oh, there's oil everywhere. Mm -hmm. There he is, and that's why I conveniently have a drip pan underneath it. All right, so there's a couple of things you need to know when adjusting the valves on a Volkswagen. First of all, you want to do this when the engine is cold. Okay? You don't want it necessarily to be at operating temperatures because you have to compensate for thermal growth. That means whenever metal gets hot it expands so if you set the valves uh, potentially too tight and that actually expands it will hold the valves open which uh, will, will hurt performance a lot and you can actually even burn a valve if you get one too tight and you'll know pretty quickly if uh, if you got one too tight so factory Volkswagen engines uh, the general rule of thumb is to set them at six thousandths lash now what you're going to need to do that of course is a good old filler gauge Okay, you're going to take it, you're going to pull out the six thousandths shim, which is actually conveniently right there, and you are going to gap that bad boy at six thousandths. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in a second. Now, mine is an aftermarket cam. This is an Engle W120, and I conveniently have the cam card because I know that there's gonna be some Volkswagen purists that are gonna argue with me. Engle says set the valve lash at four thousandths, okay? This is an aftermarket grind cam. It is more radical than a stock cam. Now, because of that, it is an aftermarket ground cam, the cam profile is much more exact than a factory cam. And because it's much more exact, I can set my valve lash tighter, which inherently makes a quieter engine. So right now I have a bolt, uh, of course, on my crankshaft, and I have simply just a, a good old adjustable wrench here and this is a lot easier with a Baja or a buggy or rail buggy. Um, I am turning the engine and right now I'm doing cylinder number one right here. I'm actually turning the engine until this intake valve is completely open and the reason I want to do that it's all the way in it's open is because when this one is open I know my exhaust is is shut okay now being that it's shut if you listen my valve lash okay so that's how I like to do mine I do intake open exhaust shut and then whenever I get ready to do the intake side I will reverse it I will wait until the or I'll rotate the engine until the exhaust is completely open and the intake at that point will be shut and it'll chatter just a little bit like that yeah just a little bit like that just a little bit so which is the tiniest little amount you got to leave because you don't want it to be too tight you don't want it to be too loose so Where's the four? The four. Now, rusty shims are not the way. Yeah, to yeah. It'll again, be good enough, though. Again. It's just a Volkswagen. It is just a Volkswagen. <laughs> but yeah, Jordan's right. You really want to lubricate these. Um, this is an old set that I've had for a bazillion years. I've got a much better set at work. Um, I've had these for a long time. And what you want, the reason why you want to lubricate these is because if you notice, when things rust, what happens? Well, they build oxidation on them, it gets thicker. And we're talking about four one thousandths of an inch right here. So you can actually see how flimsy that right. is. Yeah, if it has a layer of rust on it, the entire measurement is botched. And this one's actually not too bad. No, it's pretty clean. It's, it's pretty clean, so we should be pretty good here. If you had a Brillo pad or something, you could, you could smooth them up like chrome, but yeah, you could, it's not a big deal. You could smooth them up like chrome. The problem with that is, is you're actually take, you're taking material off, so it, yeah. don't, it doesn't really do that but i have seen people do it before and i, I don't mean too much i mean yeah, just enough to clean them up a little bit especially i've seen something that were pretty rusty that guys were using yeah like those just look discolored they don't have anything growing on them 
So right now I've taken my wrench and I've simply broke loose my lock nut right here. And what I'm going to do now is insert my feeler gauge between the rocker tip and the valve stem. And we're going to check clearance. Now remember the name of this gauge is the what? The feeler gauge. This is an, a unit of measurement you're doing by feeling the gap. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing it to and fro in that gap and I can feel that if you, you can actually see it's moving very, very freely. That means that this valve has begun to work loose a little bit. Now what I wanna do is I wanna tighten up this rocker arm until I just barely feel it start to get tight. Okay. A little bit of drag. Yeah, a little bit of drag. So right there feels nice. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take your 13 millimeter and we're gonna lock it down. And yes, these nuts are one slap out. There we go, four thousandths of valve lash. Excellent.